Harley Quinn at the end of the day is just human. She doesn't have any power. She doesn't even have a big pile of money or gadgets to back her up like Batman. So how did Harley Quinn go from being Joker's criminal sidekick to a vigilante in her own right who has beaten some of the best? Welcome back, Nerd Squad. Today, we're going to talk about some of the fights that even we can't believe Harley Quinn won. Though I personally do like to remind people there is way more to her character than meets the eye. Join me as we count down the top 10 Harley Quinn fights we can't believe she won. Let's get counting, shall we? Number 10, Deadpool? Okay, so not really Deadpool. More like DC's parody version of Marvel's parody character. You know who I'm talking about. It's Red Tool. Red Tool is a mercenary who only fights with power tools, and while he doesn't appear to have regenerative powers, can definitely still take a beating. In fact, he even got beat himself up by Harley Quinn after having his phone number tattooed on her butt and arranging to surprise her for a wedding. People have always thought Harley and Deadpool would make a great match, which is where Red Tool and his sudden romantic inclination come in. Of course, for Harley, it would take more convincing than a surprise wedding. She beat Red Tool to the point that he was knocked unconscious, proving that in DC's opinion, Harley could make quick work of Marvel's Deadpool besides at least their parody of him. However, Harley did ultimately decide to team up with Red Tool after he came to and they were surrounded by the GCPD. Fortunately, his wedding present to Harley was the perfect ticket out of this predicament. I kind of love Red Tool and Harley Quinn together too. They're pretty cute. Also just like Red Tool in general with his little, his little uh, tool speech bubbles. Number nine, Manos. Manos is the wielder of the Infinity Rings. So yeah, you guessed it. He's a parody of Marvel's Thanos. But just because he's a parody doesn't mean he's not powerful. He still wields those super powerful rings and is super evil, leading to Power Girl to want to take him on when both she and Harley seek him out on their adventure together. While Manos is busy monologuing about just how epically he is going to destroy them both, Harley Quinn manages to steal the rings off his fingers without him noticing, and then accidentally kills him with the rings to boot. She didn't know they were loaded, you know? So it's not really her fault there. Should this be possible? Probably not. Is it hilarious? You betcha. How did she even steal those rings without him noticing? That's what I want to know. Number eight, Lobo. In Injustice Gods Among Us, Harley Quinn is working some stuff out after Joker is gone and ends up stealing Lobo's flying motorcycle. This ends about as well as you could imagine, with Harley being chased all over by the crazy, overly violent parody of a tough 90s guy. Lobo having the power to regenerate and Harley Quinn being a normal human would mean you'd think that she'd never be able to beat him. But you'd be wrong. Armed with Lex Luthor's super strength and durability pills and her knowledge of psychology, Harley ends up convincing Black Canary and Green Arrow to team up with her and then makes quick work of her pursuer. And then of course, using her psychology, she's like, yeah, this isn't really about me, is it Lobo? And Lobo's like, not, you're right. And before we move on to our next point, just a quick reminder to give this video a thumbs up if you're enjoying it and if you love Harley Quinn as much as I do. Number seven, Deathstroke. Of course, this one, like Lobo, was a bit of a team effort. In fact, even more of a team effort than Lobo's defeat, if I'm being honest. But still, Harley fought alongside the rest of the Suicide Squad to take down Deathstroke. And it worked, so I'm counting it. They ultimately were successful and Harley did help. So yeah. Deathstroke actually was also working with the squad, but ended up betraying them. Together with Black Manta and a final shot from Deadshot, Harley took down Slade Wilson, which even with help is still pretty impressive considering how usually unstoppable and undefeatable Deathstroke is considered to be. Yeah, I feel like even if you get help in defeating Deathstroke, you're still doing pretty good if you can do it. I couldn't do it with help. I don't know, maybe unless like Superman was helping me? Number six, Ulysses Highwater. Ulysses was Hell's very own bounty hunter who pursued Harley after she managed to break out of her own personal circle of torment in the steamy underworld. I don't know why I called it a steamy underworld because it's, yeah, it's hell and it's not nice. I feel like steamy makes it sound a lot nicer than it actually is. She was back with her crew, the Quintets, and while Ulysses was a powerful demon who wielded guns and magic smoke and magic bullets, Harley found a way to outsmart him. I just love that this is more often than not Harley's tactic. In a typical psychologist's play, she simply found a bounty that Highwater craved more and used it to manipulate him. He caught her, but she found a way to manipulate her tormentor, Petite, and then get back to Ulysses to offer him the bounty of his dreams so that she might escape his ire. Pretty brilliant, really. It didn't end up working out for Highwater, but in the end, it definitely worked out for Quinn. Number five, Batman. 
At least this one feels like a sort of fair fight, because both Batman and Harley Quinn are humans without any superpowers. But when it comes to skill sets and resources, Batman is definitely working with a lot more than Harley Quinn is. Still, somehow, there have been multiple occasions where Harley has bested Batman in both the animated universe and even in the comics, and much to the chagrin usually of the Joker, proving that while Joker may have been around for longer, Harley might somehow be an even greater criminal genius in some weird twist of fate. Of course, Batman also might try to convince you that he's only lost any fight to Harley because he wanted to, and that it was all part of his master plan. But then, what else is new? Isn't that usually Batman's go-to excuse in the face of defeat? I don't know how many comics I've read where Batman's like, oh, I meant to lose. It's all part of my master plan. <laughs> okay, Bruce. Of course, if you still feel like this is too, um, uh, you know, racy or is too dangerous, uh, let us know and we can always try to do something different. Number four, Adolf. I mean, this one is just super surprising because Harley would need a time machine or something to even like get back in time to the leader of the German forces during World War II, yeah? Or you might just need Superman's balls. No, not those balls, these balls. Harley managed to swipe these Kryptonian power orbs while she was in Superman's Fortress of Solitude. The green ones allow you to time travel, which sends Harley back in time to, well, an alternate timeline that basically looks a lot like DC's bombshells, in this case. In fact, um, it pretty much is DC's bombshells. Harley goes back there and surprisingly not only runs into and defeats Adolf, but manages to defeat a bunch of armed soldiers besides. It's all pretty impressive, actually. She also gets to kiss herself, her bombshell self. Her bombshell self is like gross. <laughs> Number three, Wonder Woman. Sometimes you have to defeat the ones you love for their own good and protection. That's what happened in this fight featuring Harley Quinn and Wonder Woman. Well, it was less a fight and more of a rescue slash kidnapped attempt, but still Harley came out on top here and managed to defeat Wonder Woman in order, of course, to rescue her. So it was a nice defeat. Harley Quinn is actually a huge superhero fan herself, if you didn't know, especially of Wonder Woman and of Power Girl. In an attempt to protect Diana from those who were hunting her down, Harley disguised herself as a flower delivery person. And when Diana turned her back to go grab a pen to sign for the flowers, she knocked her out with a gas bomb. So yeah, it wasn't like a crazy epic fight, but still, it's pretty impressive that Harley was able to like, kinda pull one over on Wonder Woman there. She still beat her, gotta say. Number two, death. Not like the character death, but the actual concept itself. In the 2000 Harley Quinn solo series, we see Harley die and go to hell. But you already knew that from my point about hell's best bounty hunter, Ulysses Highwater. To continue on from that point, Harley doesn't only defeat Highwater in the end by piecing together what he really wants and why and getting it for him, but in doing so, she also manages to escape hell and death itself. You see, Harley wants to help Highwater reconnect with his son as he's hunting down the man who stole him away. His lover, Nathan Drum, his son's lover, not his lover, who he blames for actually corrupting his son. Harley finds out unsurprisingly that Highwater's son and Drum are of course not in hell, but somewhere likely much better. The other place perhaps being heaven. She offers Highwater their whereabouts, but makes him promise not to punish either of them for finding love with one another. However, just as Highwater seems to agree and assures Harley that he actually loves his son very much, and so he wouldn't do that anyways, Etrigan shows up and kicks Harley out of hell. You see, she's just too much of a nuisance to remain there. After all, people aren't supposed to find things like love and forgiveness during their stay in hell. So yeah, he rhymes her the heck out of there and then squishes loot. Lou Harley, he's like, you're too annoying. The Ballad of Harley Quinn. Number one, the Trinity. Harley Quinn has not only managed to defeat all of those superheroes individually, but even managed to defeat them all together, what we refer to as the DC Holy Trinity of superheroes. In Heroes in Crisis, she manages to make quick work of them, using them against one another. She gets close enough to Diana, hugging her and confessing that she was not the one to blame for the tragedy at Sanctuary, so that she can get her hands on her lasso of truth. Haha. -ha. She then uses 
uses that to tie up Batman, threatening to break his neck with the lasso, while using it to question him. She asks him if he has anything on him that, uh, you know, could be used against Superman. And you know, paranoid old Batman, he definitely does. He has a bit of kryptonite in his belt, he tells her. She takes that and uses it to defeat Superman, taking off and escaping before anyone is able to do anything. Honestly, I'm actually really surprised that Wonder Woman didn't really do more here because I feel like Diana definitely had the opportunity. But I guess, you know, once you're holding Batman hostage, it's like, not much you can do because they're like, we don't want Batman to die. So fair. What victories has Harley had or shared that you have found the most surprising? Who would you like to see Harley face one on one? Let us know in the comments below. And speaking of comments, it's time to turn to some comments from one of our latest videos, top 10 weirdest Batman romances. Part two, Michael Reese reflects, Oh yeah, Batman and Zatanna, I never thought about that before. Although the time she erased his memory after the whole Dr. Light terribleness might make for an untrustworthy relationship. Yeah, you're not wrong about that. Although, honestly, Batman was actually really upset with her for a while, and then he actually does kind of forgive her. He like goes back to like calling her by her, uh, her little pet name that he has for her and stuff. It's all good now, apparently, but I would never be able to forgive someone for that. It's pretty terrible. Tiffany Corbin comments, wow, Batman has a complicated love life. He certainly does. You are not wrong, he does. John Doe writes, Amanda, I want you to be my Silver St. Cloud. I hope that means that you don't want me to like, die at the hands of Baphomet. That's all I can think of just from like what I brought up in that point about Silver. But I'm gonna take it as a compliment because Silver is uh, a cutie and she is uh, super cool as well. Super cool socialite who's like very empathic, which I feel like I identify with. Maybe not the socialite stuff, but the the empath stuff for sure. And that's all the time we have for comments today. Be sure to comment below for a chance to have your thoughts and your feels shouted out in a future video. This has been Top 10 Nerd and I'm your host Amanda McKnight reminding you as always my friends to stay nerdy.